welcome back to the Nanton Aviation Station uh, rebuild shop. Uh, this is the um, initial part of the phase two of the wing rebuild. And uh, since the last time we got together, we've since separated the main spar from the rib structure. And, uh, and now we're about to disassemble the main spar into its component parts for, for rebuild. So again, uh, George, why do we have to take this wing spar all apart? Well, mainly to save us a lot of time, a lot of material, and a lot of work, we're going to use a lot of these parts. Right. And that's the main reason, because we also we want to, you know, maintain as much of the original parts as we can, because we're not building a brand new airplane, we're doing a restoration. Right. Now this original piece would have been in the neighborhood of 30 feet long. Yes. But now we're dealing with three separate parts. So why was that? Well, the main thing was the airplane was scrapped in Malta and it was just chopped up because Malta's a pretty small place. In order to scrap the parts, they had to chop them up to get all these parts off the island or through the city or wherever. So they actually cut these top and bottom caps, they're called, of the, uh, the spar. They, they chop them up, and that's one of the reasons why we have to remove them from the rest of the spar structure is so that we, we can replace these with new parts. Correct. As you can see on these parts here, they use various ways of chopping it apart. This obviously was either a uh, chainsaw or a sawzall. Here they used uh, acetylene torches to torch parts apart. So we have to restore all the spar caps, uppers and lowers, and the same thing on the rear. Uh, and that's why we have the new ones made. Yeah. Now the original pieces were spliced. Yes, they but were. Of course, the scrappers uh, have gone and cut these in the, obviously the wrong spot, so we can't really effectively splice them back together again. Yeah. They're, they're of no value to us as they are. Correct. Essentially, these were sliced off where the fuselage would be. Right. So, so that, over the last week or so, you've now been, again, taking bolts off. And what kind of difficulties are you experiencing with some of these fasteners? The same thing again. It's been outside for, who knows, 45 to 50 years. We've got steel bolts. We've got aluminum. We've got different types of aluminum. We have steel. Now, a lot of these parts go directly through. They are totally corroded into each other. You know, uh, so it's been it's been tough. Oh yeah, grinding. Like some of the some of the ways, if uh, Jim, if you can get closer, you can see that there's holes, empty void holes all over, and especially over here as well, where the bolts have been taken out. And it comes down to a point where if they are so corroded in there that I actually have to drill the bolt past the um, spar cap to relieve this part so that we can pull it apart but the actual bolt is still stuck in there because it's in a piece of steel and do that from two sides as well as the ones that are moving i am using i'm going to give away some of my secrets one big mother of an impact driver and what's happening is we're using the impact driver to spin the bolts and try and break them loose and at the same time, because there's still corrosion in there, is virtually pound them out with a four pound hammer and a big drift, and it takes two guys to do it. And like I said, some of them do come out, some of them don't, and they have to be drilled. Right. And there's okay. no way you can really set up a hydraulic press to try and press you know, the bolts out. So George, uh, over the last couple of days, you've managed to bring over the web of the uh, main spar from the center section um, that was in storage. And this will give the viewers an idea of 
of what it's going to look like, what the web's going to look like when we take the top and bottom caps off. So if you could just review where the caps would have been in this section. Yep. Be careful. Yep. Um, again, this is where the fuselage was. This is where it was cut adjacent to the other one. This is where the spar cap would have been all the way to the, well, where it was all the way across. As you can see, the uh, holes that are void of the bolts. This again, it was about as much work as uh, the others. Now you did that work how long ago? Uh, this work was done about a year and a half ago, and this was right. done at my home. Right, right, okay. So this is our goal, is to get the other two sections to look like this one. And once those caps, uh, the top and bottom caps, have been removed, um, we're going to be, and we're currently sourcing material to make a large jig, a large table, Correct. Uh, upon which we'll lay all the parts out, refurbish as required, yep. and then start to reassemble. Yep. As you can see in here, I am actually removing the nuts and you can see what kind of force it takes off the end of the bolt. Okay, as you can see the shiny, I've had to grind the end of the bolt off because they stave these to lock the bolt to the nut. So you can see or hear both by the amount of effort from this gun to try and remove the nuts and the bolts are still stationary and locked in place. From this point, once we remove the nuts, we can try and drive out the bolts. And as you can see, this is a big damn hammer and they're just starting to move. And this is the amount of effort it takes to try and remove these. And like I said, some only go through this section like these guys, but you can still see how much effort is involved trying to get one bolt out. And as for these guys up here, they go through all the way to the other side. That's where I have to bring in someone else to give me a hand to try and turn the bolts from the other side with the impact and then try and drive them out. But then, as you could see from the other uh, frame that you have rust and everything, a corrosion that goes all the way across. So that adds a little bit of thickness to it. It's making it that much harder to try and get out. So one of the difficulties that George is having here is that as the bolts are being pulled out, they're an interference fit. So what's happening is that this part of the web is being pulled out and effectively locking or jamming the bolts in, in the holes. So we, the, we have to keep the, this material here from bending so that the bolt can be pulled straight out. The moment this starts to bend, it, it, it causes a lock and makes it very difficult to get these fasteners out. So that's one of the, one of the challenges that George is uh, being faced with. And here you can see, again, it's like a cutaway view. You can see the open web, the web part of the spar, and the, uh, in this case, the uh, bottom cap. And of course, this is what's been cut by the salvagers, and this is the part that needs to be removed and uh, replaced with new material. And again, you can see down in this area here, here's the, some of the bolts and fasteners that need to be removed. And it gives you an idea of the amount of corrosion um, that's taken place over the years and again, complicating the removal process.